fifth victory tonight. From Los Angeles, let's welcome Joanne Deering. Hello, hello. I am a TV junkie, and my favorite show of all time is the first I Love Lucy show. But actually, if you think about it, Lucy Ricardo was the original Alexis Carrington Colby. So right now, I want to do my version of the Lucy show, only I call it Why Love Lucy. Da 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 da. Now, in this particular episode, Ricky is producing a new show, and Lucy must be in it. But she needs a new dress, and she doesn't have any money. So Lucy blackmails Fred. She threatens to tell Ethel that Fred is having an affair with Mrs. Trumbull, the babysitter downstairs. <laughs> Ethel overhears this and flips out. She ties Fred up and force feeds him 12 dozen chocolate bonbons. Now, at this moment, Lucy enters the room to show Ethel her new outfit, notices the stranglehold that Ethel has around Fred's neck. Lucy breaks him apart. Fred turns around and spits the bonbons out all over Lucy's new dress. Ethel decides she can't take this anymore and takes a flying leap out the window. Whoa. Lucy's in trouble now. She needs a new outfit. <laughs> and this is a real bad time to ask Fred and Ethel for help. So Lucy decides to sell little Ricky. Now, Big Ricky finds out that little Ricky is missing and he hightails it down to the police station where he is immediately mistaken as a wetback and he is in the process of being deported when Lucy shows up. Now, I'm going to take the scene from here and I'll play all the characters. Oh, Ricky, Ricky, I'm sorry, Ricky. Babaloo. Oh, please don't sing that song again. I'm sorry, honey. I love you. Let's go shopping. But, Lucy, we have to go see Ethel in the hospital. But what am I going to wear? Wah! Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. Your comedy challenger is originally from Connecticut. We found him at the Stand Up New York Club in New York City. Here's Charles Zucker. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's chopsticks. Did you know that in China, this is called knife and fork? I'm a big fan of music of the 60s, that great music like uh, the Gilligan's Island music. Now, I'm not talking about the theme song. I'm talking about the music during the show. All right, I picture Gilligan walking down the beach by the lagoon, right? Skipper! You think that stuff writes itself? No. I was alive during the 60s. I'm old enough that, like, if you say the name Woodstock to me, I don't think Snoopy right away, you know. <laughs> this summer is very nostalgic if you're a fan of the 60s. There are a lot of reunion tours going on, groups like the Monkees. Though I hate when the whole band can't get back together again. The Monkees toured without Mike, who I assume found either A, a job, or B, some self-respect along the way. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Opening for them is Herman's Hermits without one member of the band. Which member? That's right, Herman. The worst one of these tours I ever saw was Peter, Paul, and Mary, without Peter or Paul. It was kind of like, I would like to do some of our hits for you. Puff, Dragon, Sea. Thank you, Charles. First rate stuff from our comedian. Let's see who the judges pick. They give Joanne Deering three stars. Her challenger, Charles Zucker, receives three and a quarter stars. Charles Zucker. Joanne, come on over. Congratulations. You beat a very solid champion. And with four wins, there's still a good chance you'll be in the semifinals of round two, okay? We'll see you soon. We'll see you next week, okay? Thank you. Teresa. On Star Search, the two